It's the Packet Froa! Welcome to the channel! Picking up where we left off from the last video, we're going to start building out this lab topology here. So at the end of it all, we are going to have our three V managers in a cluster. We're going to have two V smarts so that we can manage our policy and have our routes. And then we're going to have two V bonds just for redundancy. From there, I'm going to simulate an internet connection and also an MPoS connection. And then I am going to make a data center using two Cisco routers, followed by four branches using Cisco routers so we can play with policies. And then I'm also going to do four more branches using the vEdge software so we can just see what the differences are with that. So where I left things is we just finished installing the vManage and we didn't do any of the configuration. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hop over to Cisco and we're going to look at the licensing side of things. So what you do is, if you notice on the software.cisco.com page, we have our traditional licensing and our smart licensing, which tracks our entitlement stuff. But for the SD1 in particular, we have the plug and play connect. So we're going to go ahead and click this. And in here, I have a bunch of CSR 1000 Vs and also Viptela licenses that we can use. So we need two components here if you're going to add your own. First of all, you need to go to controller profiles. And I already have one here, but I'm just going to edit it. And the idea of this is for zero touch provisioning. So when the routers contact Cisco, this is the V bond that gets sent to it. So this is out of date for our lab environment. So what I'm going to do is just change this to host name. And then I'm going to use vbond.testlab.com. And then the port that we use is 12346. We can also get fancy with some other options here, but I'm just going to go next. And then submit. Now I can just go over to devices. We have plenty of devices, but I'm just going to show you how to add a couple more. So in my case, because this is a software lab, I'm going to add software device. And then we're going to click our software device again. Then we have to search for what we're using. So if we want a CSR 1000 V, we just type in CSR and search for this. And then we pick our quantity. So if I wanted to add, say, another five, I just do that and tell it the controller profile. Now, if I wanted to add the V edge, we basically do the same thing, except for we search for V edge instead, just like that. I'll add another five and test lab. So now later on when we connect our vManage to our smart licensing it can pull this devices for us. We can also choose to download a offline version of our licensing but I'm not going to bother since I have internet connectivity for this lab. So back to my virtual machine the first thing I want to do is get an IP address on it there so we can SSH into the box so it looks a little bit better for us. So if you remember, we set our password already, so we just need to log in with that password. And what I'm going to do is just go ahead and set up some basic IP connectivity, and then we'll talk about what we did after the fact. All right, so at this point, I should be able to SSH into these guys. OK, that looks a little bit better. So just to look at what I actually did there. We don't configure interfaces directly in Viptela. What we do is we put everything under a VPN, which is kind of like a VRF in a regular networking discussion. The idea is the vManage comes with two VPNs, the zero, which is your connectivity. And also we can choose to use a VPN 512 for out of band management, but we're not going to bother in this particular lab. So what I did is I put Ethernet zero under VPN zero, set an IP address, and basically under the tunnel interface, we define what services are allowed to be reached for it there. I just set all, but we can get very particular if we want to be more secure. And of course I enable the interface. And then just like with a VRF, you would put your static routes underneath the VPN zero. I went ahead and did the other vManages already. So what I'm going to do is just work on the system configuration. So system is where we put all our general parameters. For example, we have host name which we can call vManage01. By the way, you can enter a bunch of commands on one line if you want to, but I'm just going to do it one at a time for the first one here. 
And the next thing we need to do is tell it what site uh, the device is in. So I'm just going to say 255 for management. Next we need a system IP and this is basically a loopback address that we can use for the T-lock stuff I mentioned. This has to be unique, but multiple devices can be in the same site. Next we need to tell it what organization we're in. So I am going to be test lab. And then you can optionally also set the service provider organization name. If you do this, it has to match for everything there. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in test lab as well. Next, we need to tell it how to reach the vbond. So this is going to be vbond, vbondtestlab.com, just like so. And then if we want, we can do optional things such as set MTP. And I'll just put my two NTP servers in here. So notice the configuration isn't actually applied until I type commit. And once I do that, we see the host name change right away. Now I do need to make a quick change because I set a DNS name here, but I didn't set a DNS server when I did the configuration. So I just go back into VPN zero and type in DNS, my DNS server primary for the first one, and then secondary for the second one. I'm going to do a quick sandy check to make sure I can get online here. And I can. Now at this point, I should be able to log into the web interface. This is a good sign. So I'm going to log in with the same username and password I set. And we have a dashboard with nothing in it, which makes sense because we just started building it. So the first thing we want to do is run down to settings. And we need to start telling it some information here. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and set the organizational name. This has to match what we said in the organizational name. For the vbond, this is going to be vbond.testlab.com. And the way this works is this is just an A record that points to each of our vbonds. So if we look at my DNS server, you can see that I have a VPON pointing to 94, 95, and then I have two VPON A records uh, so the DNS server can do load balancing based on what's convenient for it. So next we have hardware WAN edge certificate of authorization. And we can choose to do the on the box certificate, which is basically the burden hardware, or we can use an enterprise CA if we want to use our own CA. I'm just going to leave this as it is. And then for the controller certificate authorization, we have four options. One is if you have an agreement with Cisco, you can have the device automatically reach out to Cisco TAC and then they will issue a certificate. You could also choose to do the same thing with Symantec, but it also goes to Cisco. You can do a manual, which you manually deal with the certificates, or you can use an enterprise CA. I'm just gonna leave it at Cisco. For the validity, this lab is not going to live long, so one year is fine, but you can also choose this too. And you can choose how often the controllers are going to reach out to try and issue certificates. I'm just going to put this down to one minute there, so I'm not waiting all day. So now that that's the controllers, next is the WAN edge. So I'm just going to edit this guy. And again, we can leave it automated, which is just going to send things to Cisco to get sorted out or we can use a manual C. I'm just going to leave it automated for our purposes. If I want to, I can put a certificate for our web interface. I'm not going to bother quite yet, but this is where we would do it. We would make the CSR and send that in. And then the last major thing I need to do is tell it how to reach my smart account. So I'm just going to type in my information. And this is going to be used there so it can issue its certificates and such. So now that's done, what we can do is go ahead and build our cluster before we get too deep in anything else there. So we're going to go under administration and then cluster management. And then we're just going to say add. The first thing it's going to do is configure the local device before it does anything else. So this is going to, not, so this is going to connect to itself. And we can pick what services we want to run. So you have to do the application server. You can also choose various databases and messaging. 
And you can also do the software defined application visibility controller just for some extra features. We'll check that. You do need to download that binary from Cisco though. And then we tell it the username and password for the box. It's going to ask us for that file I just mentioned. So just give me one second. Here it is. You just drag it in and upload. And then when this is done, it's going to restart the server. So I'm just going to pause this here for about 10 minutes and then we'll do the other nodes. Okay, that's back up. So if we go back to our cluster here, we can now add another vManage. So this is going to be 10.22.92. Same username password. And we're going to check all these guys again. We'll click OK. And again, we're just going to wait for a while until this is finished. Okay, that's done, and I also went ahead and did the third one there, so we're not too repetitive. You see we have green check marks on all our services, so we're good to go from a cluster perspective. The other thing we need to do is make sure that we've imported our licenses. So we do that by going to Devices. And then I can just choose to sync my smart account. And what it's going to do is it's going to pull down that list that we defined in the plug and play section. So we should have approximately 30 or 40 devices in here. Which we do. We can see we have a bunch of CSRs and we have a bunch of V edges that we can use. So next, we need to start building out our controllers. So we have our vManage, but we also need our vBond and our vSmart. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and stop the video here, and in the next one, we'll get the other controllers started up.